guests of the week as much as we do. Seattle, well, Jensen and Jared! <laughs> Horsing around for like 15 hours a day as I'm editing the uh, episode. It's so. more like this. The writer, be the writer. Coming up to me, be the writer. Hey! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, yeah, we don't know you. <laughs> often, often it is. Uh, well, I'm stoked to get back to this collection. Um, without further ado, uh, yes, that was a quick hand. <laughs> Are you a Seattleonian? Okay. So From Atlanta. No wonder, that's why she was so right. quick. This was the closest <laughs> one to me, right? <laughs> All the locals were like, uh, it's still morning. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, still on East Coast time. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Jared, yes. you and Nisha did a live stream on Facebook the other day. Yes. And it was this big pile of sulfur. Yes. And what happened to that video? Uh, <laughs> has anybody been to Vancouver? Woo! Has anybody sat kind of in either the downtown area or in the uh, Stanley Park area and looked across the water and seen two giant <coughs> mounds of yellow? So that's sulfur. <clears throat> Real sulfur. Uh, smells so good. It smells so good. It smells like a demon. So we, uh, we happen to be filming in the area, <clears throat> so we decided to go play in the sulfur. Um, <laughs> not always all the screws loose. So, hey, Ron Nates, let's go play. You know, <laughs> we, suffice it to say, we played in the area and then had like people running over. Like, you have to delete the videos because the client, I guess, which is the person who buys the sulfur, I don't know what kind of person that is necessarily, <laughs> but I guess the people happen to be fans. So they're like, why are Sam Winchester and Castiel like playing around in my soul group that I'm not going to turn into a tire? And so we had to like mix it ASAP. Um, so it's, some, it's probably somewhere. What happens to the Facebook live videos that get deleted? Are they still out there? <laughs> yeah, it's never, ever deleted. Well, because we were like, it's one of these things where we were just goofing around. Like, we were like, hey, is it toxic? And the guy's like, well, I wouldn't lay around. And they'd be like, good enough. <laughs> So we're playing, and it's this guy, I'm not gonna, it's a guy or a girl who gave a tour, 
And then we were mortified. We were like, did we just get this guy fired because we're being idiots? We didn't ask him if we could touch it. We asked him if it was toxic. <laughs> we probably should have been followed up with like, can we touch it on camera for millions of people? Um, which I'm sure the answer would have been no. When was this? Was this Thursday? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was not there. I knew we had to go back to work doing something. It wouldn't have happened if I was there. You're responsible. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'd be a little more surprised. But yeah, yeah, so it's, I'm sure it's somewhere out there. But we're trying not to get the nice young person who gave us a tour of fire. Um, your turn. Yes. Hi. So welcome back to Seattle. Um, I am a board from Texas, so just represent. Um, so my question is um, for both of you, but uh, the latest episode, the wrestling episode, which I absolutely love because I'm a wrestling fan. So I saw how Dean was so excited, and like, I can agree with that because that's how I get. And I saw like how he turned into a kid again. He was getting in the ring. And my question is actually for both of you. Uh, when you guys were growing up, what were you guys such big fans of that you were just like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Like, what did you guys freak out over? Wrestling was one of them. I still have like Ultimate Warrior and Undertaker toys. The Bat Brothers. I still got them. Hulk. Hulk, who's now 115 million dollars. I might leak a sex tape for you. <laughs> We're just streaming live on Facebook. <laughs> and the sulfur. The sulfur is out. <laughs> but yeah, wrestling was Team sex. Uh, <laughs> Team and sex. Oh, yeah. You did very well. You did it. 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 <laughs> Done it. Been it's like, you would, it'd be like a muggle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter reference. Woo! <laughs> uh, that was one. I was always going to the Cowboys and Spurs. Uh, World Jam and a young and later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I collect cards and stuff. That was a pretty, pretty Star Wars. <laughs> Lynn knows a few other things that we'll, we'll, we'll wait for. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. I was into, uh, I, I collected baseball cards and so I was pretty into baseball as well. And uh, I think I would have, uh, I freak out every time I go into a baseball stadium. I don't know if you guys. That and monster trucks. <laughs> All right. I don't know why. Something about a stadium. Going into a big stadium with a big event happening. Um, yeah. That's, that's why you always act so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been lucky to like get to some cities and like, hey, we're going to be in Seattle. We should go see a game on Saturday. Like, okay. So we'll show up and everything's kind of like, you know, we're getting two tickets. As soon as the ticket, as soon as Jensen gives the ticket, he's like, <laughs> Music in his head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go wrestling. I saw at the very end. Did you, was your hand up? Because I saw it shoot up. All right. So again, the track. Daughter. Yeah. Oh, so we're from, we came from Boston. It was a surprise for my daughter. So oh, cool. call it break. Um, because she loves you. <laughs> but I think you're boys because I'm a mom. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, if she, do you want to ask a question? Because before she asks a question, I just want to both let you know, I'm sorry everyone, I know it's really corny, but I came here as I have to fly with my daughter to here so she can't go home. So I'm just for the ride here. Great. But I've noticed a lot of the people have been getting up in all of these panels saying, I've struggled, I'm struggling, you guys are great. And I'm a, before I came here, I, my mindset was, oh, why are those fans are so crazy? They're just people like us. But I just want to let you know, thank you, because after being here for three days, you, all of you, really do care for these people and show them a great deal of respect and support, and, and what you do not related to these yeah, super con, whatever cons. Thank you. And it's really, really, I'm sure your moms are both really proud super of you. Super cons. <laughs> Everyone really appreciates you, and I, I, if I was your mom, I'm sure they're very proud of you. You're the nicest so person from Boston I've ever seen. <laughs> Just wondering, or if there's like a favorite emotional scene where you felt really proud of it? 
Uh, I'll go first. Um, so emotional scenes in the beginning, like as an actor, one of my least favorite things to read in any script is like Sam lying blah blah parentheses. He starts to cry or they cry. <laughs> or a lot of times, unfortunately, it's like a member of the guest cast. They're telling a story about how their roommate was found and Bloody Mary was written on the walls or whatever it is, and it's like they cry. And I hate it because you're like sometimes it doesn't happen. We've had scenes, we had a scene the other day where it's not written anything about tears, and when the scene played out, <clears throat> Dean Winchester was tearing up. Like, it didn't happen. It wasn't written like that. Huh? <laughs> and it's a great scene. It's episode 21. Prepare. But so, just kind of, at this point in time, we spend so much time with these guys, Sam and Dean, that it's kind of easy to pop in and out of it. For those who have seen the internet things were crazy, like, that, it's sort of like, <laughs> actually, thanks for your time. <laughs> Out the door. So I think emotional scene is just letting it kind of, letting the character feel it. And I guess for me, I think the thing that came to mind, yes, there's something I was proud of, was probably the season eight finale. It was a lot more into that. They had the scene with uh, this dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, and it's changed over the years, I think. I think Jared will agree that, uh, you know, seasons kind of one through three or four and five, there was, Six, maybe a, seven, there was maybe a different process to kind of get those emotional scenes, to get to, 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 get to that emotion. Um, but like you said, you know, just this past week, there was a, a scene that was, it read in my, when, when first reading it, it read like a, kind of a, a normal Dean Winchester reaction to what he was dealing with in that scene. You know, kind of angry and rough and, and um, and then I started thinking about it, and I'm like, well, that's, that's certainly the obvious choice, and we've seen that uh, reaction from Dean hundreds of times. Um, maybe this is bigger than that. Maybe this is something different. And so I just kind of looked at it from a slightly different perspective, um, and it took on this whole different nuance that I wasn't even prepared for. Uh, and it just kind of came out. And so we did it once in a while, and then they started talking about, okay, who's gonna get their coverage first, and it was he and I, and, and uh, one other person in the scene. And, uh, and so I, I asked Tom Bright, who's directing the episode, I was like, hey, listen, I don't know what just happened in the blocking, but something kind of, this just took an emotional turn in the scene. Would you mind if we did my coverage first? Because I don't know if that's gonna stick around if I do it too many times, if I get stale. And I want to do it while I'm fresh, that way, the other two actors can see what's happening. They, when they get their coverage, they can react accordingly. So it's you know, there's a bit of a, a game plan there. So we did we did that, and it got a bit got emotional. And then what was crazy was because the scene and because I was looking at it that way was so heavy. When they turned around and I was off camera, still just waterworks. And I'm like, all right. And uh, I remember the other actor. I was like, Jensen's like playing this up. He's like, oh. <laughs> I remember. The other actor, who we could probably say, but I'm not going to, uh, was like, uh, wow, that's the best off-camera acting I think I've ever <laughs> I was like, well, that wasn't intentional, trust me. It was a funny thing, I think he and I have both actually talked about it. De Niro once said that when human beings, there are times, and Dane Cook does a great bit about like when you're having a cry fest and you want to, you go to the mirror and you're like, I'm crying really hard, this is great, you know, but for the most part, People hide their emotion, so it's almost the, the marriage of seeing emotion well up behind somebody's eyes, but seeing them fight it. Like, I find that much more interesting than somebody just going, you know. Uh, so anyways, hope you like it. Yeah, I find, yeah, I find that if, when emotion kind of overtakes you, the more you fight against it, the more you can't hide it. Which is, uh, which is interesting when you've got a camera in your face. Um, as opposed to going, oh, I should, I should be emotional here, and it would be really impactful if I could drop some tears, it never works. And so I find that, I find never to, like he said, when you see it in the script and it's written, oh, Sam cries, that's that's like putting in an order for tears and that's never gonna happen naturally. But if it happens naturally and it wasn't written, then I think Super those are naturally. <laughs> so I think those are, the, those are the magic moments and I just, you know, who knows when they are, they kind of surprise us too, so. Welcome to the Supercon. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, how about the backwards hat? Yes. Oh, hi. Hi. I love people, they raise their hand and they're like, yes, and then they get called in and they're like, 
Me? I know my hand, I was stretching. I wasn't. Well, it's kind of that awkward moment where it's like, wait, really? Uh, okay. So, anyway, first things first. Last year, there was a question where someone asked about um, where you wanted to visit in Somewhere that I can't remember off the top of my head, and that woman who is taking a video right now shouted out at the top of her lungs, Bend, Oregon. I don't know if you remember that, which you probably don't. I you thought it was Bend Over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly that way only. Okay. So, if, no. all honesty, if somebody yelled Bend, Oregon from the crowd, it probably sounded like Bend Over. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, first off, I wanted to apologize okay. for that. <laughs> Is, um, bend Oregon. <laughs> Will you please bend Oregon in front of us? <laughs> no. no. Uh, so I noticed that they have vinyl up on the set, which is like a very super cool thing that I love. Um, if you could pick one of the vinyl, the records that are on the set, oh, you mean off. middle letters? No, no, no. Vinyl is in like the. <laughs> Legitimately old records? Yeah. Where? You're going to drive me to the brink of insanity. I hope you're going to stop. Been there and back several times. I think you started on the brink of insanity. I'm going to just push you over. Do you mean the music used in the show, or do you mean the physical records that are on set? Physical records that are on set, like in your room. Thank you. Thank you. In the middle of letters. That's what I said. <laughs> No! In his room! In the middle of letters. You don't want to go. Which one do you see? Well, I will, I will, I'll ruin the image by saying that a lot of those are really bad records. Oh. Uh, because oh. they were, you, they're not seen, so it just, we just needed a stack of vinyls, so they just pulled them out of their, you know, lock up, and it's, there's, there's, the gems, there's, though. there's some, yes, there are some good ones, and they usually put those on top, so that if it does get seen, it looks like it would be a stack of Dean's records. Uh, but if you take the, the ACDC one off the top, then it's like, Very yes. <laughs> Tim, this is like the best of Burt Bacharach. You know? <laughs> There's one, but the first one that came to my mind is there's like a very wide Graves hits or like a live album. And it's hilarious because it would never fly these days with all like the, the publicity marketing people. Because the picture on the front, it's a vinyl record, and I guess it's Barry White at a concert. And he's like dripping sweat and like a booger's hanging out of his nose. And you're like, who approved this picture? Like from the greatest hits. Because he's like that's like a not flattering. I mean, it just like he looks Maybe like he's been put through the ringer. Uh, but I'd go with that, just because that's an awesome picture. <laughs> I Thank did, you. I, I, did, I remember holding up one. Kenny Loggins? No. <laughs> Kenny Loggins? No. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin and the Chip. I had that one. Which, by place. the way, do you guys remember that movie, like back in the, what was it, the 90s? Yes. Yeah, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yes. Right? Like, the We Are the. Girls of rock and roll, we are the boys yes. of rock. That's all well, just girls that's first. all my daughter is singing these days. <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> Dub. Sorry. Uh, I don't think he's going. Uh, I, I'm going with the with the boomerang. I didn't know if you guys were done talking. No, nah, yes, we are. I just never seen that was like a cat paw. It's just kinda like this. <laughs> Do you know you have like a little thing and the catcher goes <laughs> Flash of light, sonic boom. Well, I am also a cat lady, so. Um, there you go. Yeah. Um, You're part cat. You weren't supposed to find out. <laughs> um, I'm super nervous, but luckily this question is for my best friend. Um, her name is Maddie, she couldn't be here. And I told her I would do this, so. That's pretty funny. Thank you. You guys will see her later. I wish she was here. No, I wish she was here. So she's not here right now, but she is well, here. Well, she, I mean, she is here. Yes. I, yeah, but I see. Not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all cat <laughs> Yes, we're ready. You're not wrong. Okay, so from from Maddie. 
um, is there a moment that you can trace back? I'm sad. Like your tracer bond, where you knew you were on to something special? I'm sure your friend would be very happy to know <laughs> she how well boss. she was represented. She told me to do that. Uh, we're we're going to meet her friend. She's going to be like, I heard you at the time. She wants you to take a picture. Take a I'd love to. Sorry. Yoda or something. Um, I didn't even catch the question. I'll ask it like a normal person. Is there a moment that happened that made us think that we were on to something? Well, like, is there a specific moment, or can you trace your bond back to it, like, some point in time where you realized that this was something that would evolve to this point? God, I mean, I, I don't think anything could have really prepared us for it to evolve like this. But I think I remember, I mean, early on, it was sort of like, where are you from, Texas? Where are you from, Texas? Cool. <laughs> Who's your team, Cowboys? Who's your team, Cowboys? <laughs> it's going to be all right. <laughs> are you talking about, like, him and I, or are you talking about all of this? Either or, I mean. Everything? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I remember, There's. it's obviously been a, a you know, collection of highlights over the past 11 years for not just, you know, his and I's you know, friendship and, and growth as, as two guys who can work together, get along as well as we do. I would say that one of the moments that, that kind of comes to mind was when he and I got into a bit of a riff, season one, uh, and in 11 years, that's really the only time that he and I have ever combated each other. And I remember we got together right after that because we were both pretty upset, and we kind of looked at each other and we were like, listen, that can't ever happen again. If we want this to succeed, we want this to succeed, that kind of stuff has got to get taken care of before it reaches that level. So let's just, you know, make a pact and it's never broken, and I think that was one of the ball. That was kind of a turning moment for you and I. Like, okay, we gotta, we gotta be together, work together, and, and do this as a team if we're gonna, if it's gonna have any chance of success. And so I think early on we kind of found that we were better as a, as a, as a total, the sum of two of us, than we were separate. And I think that happens in any relationship, whether it's friends or uh, coworkers or boyfriend girlfriend, boyfriend boyfriend, boyfriend or spouses, any sort of relationship it kind of gets tested and that's when you find out whether or not it's worth it to you. If you're like, okay, that kind of sucks, let's move on. You know, like, this pissed me off. Okay, this pissed me off. Okay, instead of saying like, shove it, I'm gonna be like, all right, buddy, I'm sorry for my part. I'm sorry too. All right, let's get back to that. So, I remember that. Um, yeah. And then as far as this goes, I think it's really been, um, you know, it's been, it's been fueled by you guys. Um, you know, the fact that you show up, uh, you know, there's the, uh, what is it, the, the, I forget what movie it was, but Harrison Ford goes, you know, guys are easy, women just have to show up. <laughs> Been doing it. That's right. <laughs> and so, it, it, I think that really kind of, uh, when we, when we could see and feel the energy and, and, um, and the common denominator that is the love of this the show and the storyline of these characters, uh, and we can share that with you guys, you guys can share it back with us, then that really got the ball rolling, and I think it just it snowballed for the past 10 years, and it's been awesome for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I'm gonna go way over here, in the red shirt with the red band on your arm. Quit looking behind you, it's you. There's not gonna be somebody else with a red shirt and a red band on their arm. Just you. Um, my first question is, does Jensen look high in real life as much as Dean does? Probably not as much as Dean does. Um, but yes, I, I certainly, certainly enjoy a nice slice of pie. <laughs> and then my uh, second question was... It was, yes. Um, if you had to choose, which episode would be your favorite? <laughs> well, I already mean, you know my answer, so. What is your answer? Mine would be Yellow Fever. Yeah. <laughs> because my mom and I probably rewound it and watched it like 20 times in a row, and she literally has a notification um, sound on her phone of Dean screaming. <laughs> <laughs> 
I recently saw, if you're here, and then I'm gonna embarrass you, but I recently saw a, um, <clears throat> that image of me screaming tattooed on someone's leg. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, there's that. <laughs> because, you know, Dean's just one of those people you would never think to have, you know, be scared like that. So I, I have the fever. Like, <laughs> and at the end, your um, Eye of the Tiger little video was really awesome. This is cool. <laughs> you nailed it very well. What? In the lake, it's right down. What? <laughs> what season was French Mistake? Does anybody know? Six. Six. I would go with... I would go with two. Um, for lighthearted, I would go with French Mistake because what other show can do that? And for heavy hearted, I'd go with uh, with Death's Door just because I thought it was great television. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's, we weren't such a big part of the show, so we were able to watch it and go like, "This is a like, what's the show? I should start watching the show. Like, this is a, this is good television." So I'd probably go with those two to stick out. It's hard to pick. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I could right off the top of my head say, you know, half a dozen that I would certainly say could be my favorite. Um, I'll pick one, baby. Yeah. Just because it was so different and unique, and, yeah, and it was it was a uh, it was a real challenge filming it. And I think with with that kind of challenge comes great reward, and I, I feel like we got great that. failure or great failure. <laughs> Uh, so I, I feel like Tom did an amazing job directing. I feel like our guest cast did an awesome job. I felt like Carr performed very well. <laughs> I was a happy camper. It was cool. Uh, before I pass this on, yes. I just want to say uh, thank you for creating the Old Ski Fighting and You Are Not Alone. Um, actually, you got some of my core tattoos behind my ear as kind of a reminder, so I really want to say thank you for doing that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you. Mr. Yuk. Uh, is it a Yuk? Yep. Can, can I play? Can you do you want to try? Can you interview? Uh, I... Do it! Do it! Do it! Uh, is it in two? Yes. All right, well, I, I'm not, uh, here, I'll try. Somebody who uh, who's very popular in this city, uh, Mr. Eddie Vedder. Uh, who, as some of you know, actually released an entire album uh, of ukulele songs um, called the Ukulele Songs. And he uh, he he signed the the U2 JJ to my daughter, and so I learned to play on that for her. That was pretty special. That was pretty cool. So yeah, I love that stuff. We're getting right out of here, guys. Right, do we have one more, or are we out of here? Uh, all right. How about how about right there, since uh, right next to the microphone? Yes. That, oh yeah. Sure. We'll go there. We'll go there. Um, I just wanted to know if you guys did a bracket, and if you did, who's your final four, and who do you have winning? Woo! Okay. 
God. I mean, this, I did not do a bracket this year. I did not. Uh, I get a little too, failure. Yeah, I get a little too into it. I love March Madness. I've always loved March Madness. But my problem is I can't half-ass it. I can't just like fill it out. So it would take hours of my life, and my wife would be like, uh, "The children haven't eaten in days." <laughs> yes, yeah, we don't need any more reason to watch college basketball than just for you know enjoying college basketball. If we actually had money and bracket and stuff like that. We'd, be, yeah. we'd forget about work, we'd be, we'd we'd be here with you, we'd be buried with like nine televisions and so far. I'm super bummed that uh, Northern Iowa beat Texas, so uh, that's for one, but anyways. Anyway, well guys, thank you very much. Yeah.